What's up you guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video I thought I'd do something a little bit different. We are actually getting ready for an Everglades trip. We're gonna be camping out on the boat. Whoops, you dropped the camera there. Camping on the bay boat. Again, dad's gonna be camping on his boat. My grandfather, my uncle, my little brother. Me, Megan, and Harold will be on my boat. But I thought I'd take you guys through the process and all of our checklists that we do prior to going on our fishing trips. Take you from getting the ice, going through a bait and tackle, loading the boat, what we like to bring, some of the stuff that we've kind of gotten used to over the years that we decided, you know, we can't live without this and this we don't need to bring. So I decided to make it easier on you guys. If you guys decide to do something similar to this, whether it be camping on the island, camping on the boat, going him to a campground, but it being with the boat, just some stuff you might want to check on your boat or camper, make sure you have with you. So the first thing that I like to do about a week in advance is start to make ice. That ice can be chunked ice and big ice. I actually have an ice maker. It's not going right now because as you'll see in a second, it's been making ice for quite some time now. It makes a lot of ice. So I have a hundred pounds of crushed ice ready to go, as well as these two big blocks in here. And I have a small block right there, but I have two more big blocks up there, one right there. And we have a whole bunch of um, little greens that we're gonna use as finger bait kind of, or chummers I should say, to try and chum up the grouper, maybe even some trout, snook, redfish on the flats. A bunch of fishing you can do down in the Everglades. So that's the first thing we like to do about a week in advance is start making that ice, because that ice takes long. And you wanna make sure that these big ice chunks are gonna be nice and solid, because that's what's really gonna hold that temperature for a long, long time. The cubed ice is good, but they don't hold the temperature for as long. So with every fishing trip, obviously one of the things you have to check is the weather. And so pretty much from about a week out and every day leading up to, we're always checking the weather, seeing what's happening. And unfortunately for this trip, it is gonna kick up a little bit, saying on Sunday and Monday, but Saturday looks pretty good. But there's a bunch of spots we can fish where we can still get cover. But that's one of the biggest things, always checking the weather because it's also seems to be a little cold, so we're gonna have to bring in some extra clothes, some extra sheets and blankets so we stay nice and warm. And we're also gonna bring some chili and maybe some kibasa, some good warm food to keep us warm. So that's one of the biggest things to do is always check the weather. One of the next things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my anchors because we sleep and fish in some very, very rocky areas and this sand anchor that I have for the sandbar, we will lose very quickly. So switch over to this guy because he has a ring that can, oops, there you are. He has a ring that can slide freely so if you need to pull from this angle, you just pull it out rather than having this one back angle to hang to pull from. So it's very nice. So we're gonna, as opposed to only this one where you can only pull from the one spot. So we're gonna switch anchors so that way we don't lose that one and lose a lot of money. She's a bit rusty, folks. All right, she's good to go. So, once I get the anchor switched over, one thing I like to do is I like to come into the boat, take out the stuff that I don't need, because I always keep a whole bunch of stuff in my boat for just common trips around town. Like, I keep both gaffs in the boat, which we don't need the long one this trip. We're just gonna bring the short one, just in case we get a stray cobia or something along those lines. So, in this front hatch up here, I keep a bunch of spare ropes and fenders. Because you're at the sandbar, you see one of your buddies, you want to hang out, I want your boat hanging against mine. So, in this front hatch, I got extra throwable, extra life jacket, which we don't need this trip. There's only three of us going. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get rid of these fenders. Dad's bringing his this trip, so we don't need to bring ours. Got all my extra rope right here. Gonna have to go ahead and come up here now. Double check. We have our fishing rigs there, laminated. Control motor, remote, as well as power pulse. We are good up there. Nothing else needs to come out of the boat. Everything else needs to go on it. So something else I like to do before our fishing trip, every once in a while anyway, I'll come up to the bunks where I can access it and I'll take some of this dry lube here and I'll hit the top of the bunk. Just make it a little bit more slick. I don't ever trailer my boat unhooked or back it up on the, the ramp unhooked, I should say. 
so it's okay to go ahead and spray it down and get it lubed up so that way it slides off the trailer much, much easier. Now I'll be the first one to tell you that I am not a smart person, but this was a great idea. I just took a battery box, just drilled a hole, a couple holes, got a spare tire mount, and now it's a perfect, I have some spare uh, gear lube that I use for my, my uh, wet bearings. I have the, the bearings, you put the oil in and everything, the bath, the oil bath hub, bearings very nice. Keep a little bit of extra grease, extra towels, keep a PSI gauge, my fuel treatment stuff. I keep all that quick and easily accessible in the front of the trailer in a battery box with a battery box cover. There's not a lot of wind that gets experienced there because of the truck. Like I said, I'm not one for great ideas, but that, that's one of them. So as you can see, I'm in the boat and I have almost all the hatches opened up. Just making sure they're all clean, make sure we don't have anything sitting around the creases there, sitting up in that area, making sure all of the, where all the water sits, that it creates a little bit of an algae. Make sure all that's clean, especially back in that area. I know it's kind of unimportant for the trip, but I like starting every trip with a clean boat. And I take this time to get it there. So it's nice and good for this trip and it lasts a lot longer as well. It's all about maintenance on these things. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on using the mildew mover and just go ahead and scrub the deck. Make sure you get all those pre-trip pre, pre -trip marks out, all the scuff marks, get all those out, all the stains, if there's any stains from leaves sitting in here for a while. Just keep on trekking away. Just taking this non-skid deck cleaner I have by Starbright. It works very, very well. Gets a lot, all these stains out. Take that, I'm just gonna spray the whole deck of the boat with it. I already got it going. So just gonna scrub it in, let it sit about three to five minutes, then spray it down some fresh water so you get all those little stains like that little dirt marks I'm gonna get them up like that little marks along those lines get it nice and clean start this trip off looking right We got Maxi out here now with us. The boat is clean. The compartments are open. Just letting it all air out. Once the boat's dry, we're gonna go ahead and hit the trailer in the boat at Deputy 40, just because it will be sitting in the lot for three days after we, after we dunked it in the water. Luckily, where we're going fishing is brackish water, and back that far, it's not completely salt while you're dunking it at the ocean. So it's not terrible, but we wanna spray Deputy 40 in the trailer, so that way it doesn't sit and it can really repel that water the best it can rather than just letting it sit straight on the trailer. So once we hit down, hit it with Deputy 40, we're gonna go ahead and start putting some of the stuff in the boat. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put the life jackets on the boat. We're also, while we're waiting for the driver, we're gonna start pulling out a lot of our stuff, like our propane tank, our, our grill, our tent, making sure we have all our stuff for our, our bugs. Fenders, I gotta put them back on because dad's not bringing his. Double check all the rods, make sure they're all functioning properly, make sure they're all greased up, lubed up, ready to go for the trip. Go through our tackle, and just really start getting everything together. For right now though, I'm gonna start grabbing everything out, going through, make sure we have everything. Last thing we wanna get there is for those who don't have the big wedding dress to put on or missing the, the line or clips or something along those lines. So I'm gonna start going through all that stuff right now. Well, it's a good thing I closed those hatches because it's raining again all right so i think i got almost everything pulled out of the back shed i have a little list going though of stuff that i've noticed we need so far so just some things some of the key things that we hit on our checklist obviously the grill we gotta have some to cook our food fuel for the grill and a lighter make sure we have the thermocell for the bugs make sure we have our our foam there that goes over the cooler in the boat so we can pitch our tent. There's the tent. I'm gonna make sure it has all its components in it. Right here we have extra screen just in case. Right here we have all the stuff for the screen, the rope going around the boat, as well as some uh, clips there to hold it down. Make sure we have the wedding dress with previous mosquitoes. Check. Make sure we got our two fenders. We have our th four life jackets in there. We have our throwable up there getting wet again. Make sure we got plenty of towels. We'll also use these towels to shower. Make sure we have our big Arctic cooler. 
with wire basket. Yep, we're good there. Sorry for throwing you guys all around there. Got this one. This one's got the tie down straps for the big one. Make sure we have our wire basket again. Uh, make sure we got all of our tackle. Still kind of got to go through that a little bit. Let's see our shower bag. So make sure we have our bags in case we catch fish, just in case. Extra popping corks. Make sure we have our pliers, D hookers, uh, scissors, knife, tool set inside there where the battery switches are. That's where I have the extra tools. Ropes are currently drying. We have our our measuring device right there for the fish that we catch. I got all the fishing poles out. These are all the fishing poles that we're gonna bring on our fishing trip here. We've got three conventionals for grouper, one, two big 5,000 size reels for grouper, as well as three small rods for snapper and trout and stuff like that. We're gonna, one thing that's on, a couple of things that are on our list now, propane bungees converter, so that way we can charge our phones and stuff like that, and an air mattress. Megan and I are sleeping on an air mattress. That reminds me, so I have at least Harold, this is your bed. But do not worry, you're being spoiled this trip. You have two. These are just those little self-inflating mattresses. You can clip them up on one, one on top of the other, and they actually go from like three inches when you stack them on top of each other, they go to six inches. Self-inflate, you just twist the cap, pretty nice. But we're gonna go ahead and spend a little bit of money, get an air mattress from Megan and I. He's gonna have that to sleep on. Don't feel bad for him, he'll be fine. Sure beats what he slept on last time. He slept on the floor. He had something, oh, he's fine. All right, so we are back inside later in the day, finished putting some of that stuff in the boat. All that's really left for us to do and get ready for this trip is to pack our clothes, toothbrush, toothpaste, chargers, uh, if you converter if you need one, um, some sheets, and also your pillows. Definitely don't want to get rid of your pillows. That's a bad trip. Oh. Um, also to transfer some uh, the ice over from the freezer into the coolers, load the coolers up, uh, also pre-cook our meals. What we're doing for dinner is we're doing kielbasa and taco soup. So what we'll do is we'll pre-cook the meals at home, freeze them, bring them on the boat, and then we'll have on the grill, we'll cook them on the, in the pots and pans and everything, reheat them back up and enjoy them for dinner. Other than that, that's pretty much getting ready for the whole trip if you like that video. Or if you found that anything in this video useful that you can take away from it, please drop a comment, hit the like button, and we'll see you next time.